Hey, welcome to our last presentation here on History 101. So this is going to be Reconstruction, which is our final piece of the puzzle. So Reconstruction, why it starts in 1865. Um, so April 9th, as we mentioned last week, Lee surrendered at Appomattox Courthouse. Five days later, Lincoln was shot at Ford's Theater and dies the next day. And by June, the Confederate Army ceases to exist. Um, so it's no longer an army. Yes, there might be groups of men who are still upset and they went, run around together with guns, but they are not officially Confederate Army. All right, and so this is the period when the United States needs to rebuild the South. So Lincoln, before he died, well before he died, had a plan for reconstruction. Um, he knew that once the Confederacy rejoined the Union, the Republican Party would be weakened, and he hoped to gain support from some Southerners with his economic policies. Um, so his plan was fairly lenient. It was called the 10% plan. And this is something he outlined in his Proclamation of Amnesty and Reconstruction in 1863. <coughs> Excuse me. So his plan stated that when 10% of qualified voters from 1860 took a loyalty oath to the Union, they could organize a state government. Um, so fairly lenient, only 10% of qualified voters from 1860, and then only a loyalty oath. Um, the Constitution, they write, must abolish slavery and provide education for African Americans. And another piece of this that was fairly lenient was that high-ranking Confederate leaders would not be barred from public life, so they could once again, you know, be a representative, be a senator, etc. And Lincoln said he would be granting pardons for those people. Um, he did also suggest a possible compensation for human property that was lost. Um, and he did not demand political or social equality for African Americans. So a lot of radical Republicans did not approve of this plan. They thought it was far too lenient. Um, and because they didn't like it, they ended up saying, you know, this isn't even the president's job. So this is the duty of Congress to set terms uh, for those states to regain their rights. And some united demands of these radical Republicans uh, for readmitting these southern states was an official end of slavery. They wanted that acknowledged. Um, they wanted African American rights protected, and they wanted the planter class power destroyed. So <clears throat> This is Congress's plan. It's called the Wade Davis Bill from 1864. And this plan was not quite as lenient. Um, it required half of white adult males to take an oath of allegiance before their state would be allowed to draft a new constitution. So it jumps up from 10% to half. It restricted power to unionists, um, meaning that Confederate officials could not, once again, regain government power. Lincoln vetoed that item, um, but he ended up making concessions to some of the radicals as the war neared its end. For example, he agreed to place South under temporary military rule. Okay, so we have those plans floating around, um, and a lot of people are recognizing that this is the key political moment because the South has had recognized that they were defeated. Um, so they have like physical defeat, they lost the war, they had over 300,000 people die in it, but also like a psychological loss, um, emotional loss, anger at what the North had taken, sadness at what they had lost. Um, so this was the key moment to go ahead um, and prevent a resurgence of rebellion. And so the president really needed to lay out specific terms for regaining states' rights. Uh, the problem is that Lincoln, when this happens, is now dead. And so we have Andrew Johnson in power. And you might recall, Lincoln had selected a pro-war Democrat um, as his running mate. And so now we have a Democrat in the presidency. <coughs> and here's Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson was born in, South, or in North Carolina, moved to Tennessee, and worked there as a tailor for a while. Um, he was not well educated, so upon marriage, he could barely read and write. And he got into political power as a champion of people against wealthy planters. And this is an Andrew Johnson quote. He said, someday I will show the stuck-up aristocrats who is running the country. Um, so very bitter against the wealthy planter class. Um, he accepted emancipation, but really did not care about African-American rights. Uh, he, the one thing that he did care about 
um, which aligned with some of those radical Republicans was punishing the traitorous aristocrats. So Congress did expect him to uphold uh, the Wade Davis bill and some of the views there. So he was in favor of prosecuting Confederate leaders and breaking up planters' estates, but he was also a fan of states' rights. Um, so he did want to quickly return southern states to the Union um, and have Reconstruction be a success under his presidency. And so this is Johnson's plan here. He said most white southerners, so very vague, most white southerners would have to take a loyalty oath in order to regain political and civil rights and to have their non-human property restored. He also said that high-ranking Confederate officials and anyone with more than $20,000 in property had to apply for a pardon. Um, and then once the state had their constitution drafted, um, state officials would be elected. Uh, when that happened, martial law would be revoked and the state would be recognized. Uh, things he recommended but did not formally, formally stipulate. He suggested states renounce the secession ordinance, uh, meaning they say, yes, we should never have seceded, we take it back, that was a bad idea. So formally recognizing that was recommended. He wanted them to deny Confederate debt, um, so meaning the South would still be solely responsible for their Civil War costs. So that was a recommendation, not required. And he also recommended that they ratify the 13th Amendment. <coughs> so they did not even have to ratify the 13th Amendment. Um, so it was a failure, surprise, surprise. Um, Southern states did not follow those recommendations. So many of them flat out rejected the 13th Amendment. Again, that was the amendment um, that abolished slavery. Uh, the southern states did not grant African Americans political rights or give them any effective means of education. And in addition, each southern state had enacted a series of laws modeled on old slave codes. And these are called black codes. And they were designed to keep African Americans propertyless agricultural workers. Um, they did get slightly more rights, um, which were negligible, so their marriages were officially legalized, any marriage they had already been in. They could bu technically buy and sell property, depended on which state they lived in, and they could sue or be sued, uh, but they could not serve on juries, they could not testify against white people. Um, in Mississippi, they could not buy or rent farmland, so how they're supposed to live a free life is, you know, who knows? Uh, most states could arrest vagrants and then hire them out to landowners. Um, so anyone who was seen not doing anything, any African American who was seen uh, to be a vagrant, which again is so vague that anyone could be arrested, uh, they could be arrested and then hired out to landowners, which is essentially slavery. Um, so the North was furious. The did, this did not equal freedom. Um, Southern states started electing high-ranking Confederate officials. Uh, into public office, and Johnson did nothing. He issued, issued an abundance of pardons, gave them out like candy, and he publicly announced that da, 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 Reconstruction is complete, uh, when clearly it was not complete. So this is where Johnson starts getting into some trouble with Congress. So the composition of Congress uh, was mostly moderate Republicans. So there were some Democrats, there were some conservative Republicans, there were some radical Republicans, um, some very outspoken radical Republicans were Charles Sumner, who you may recall was beaten with that cane, and a guy named Thaddeus Stevens. And really they thought the South needed a to total overhaul. Um, and Stevens said, if this didn't happen, all our blood and treasure will have been spent in vain. So even though there were not a ton of radical Republicans, they were the most outspoken here. And they really needed the help of moderate Republicans, which were this biggest block in Congress. Uh, moderates did not really desire a social revolution or to see racial equality in the South. That wasn't really a priority for them. But they did want to keep Confederate leaders from regaining their power and thought that former enslaved people did need federal protection. Um, so the key issue um, in this Radicals versus Johnson was over the place of African Americans in society. So the Radicals were fighting for political and civil rights. Um, and a lot of what Johnson was saying is that the goal there, and this is a quote, the goal of the Radical Republicans was to Africanize the southern half of our country. Um, 
But radicals, you know, they were arguing for African-American vote. Uh, moderates agreed that they did need more protections, but they weren't quite sure they wanted to push racist Northern voters away. So in December of 1865, you know, some of these, you know, reconstruction is, you know, quote, formally completed. Um, so Southern representatives start arriving in DC and the majority in Congress votes to exclude them. So they are voted out, they're not going to participate. Um, and Congress, you know, without the Southerners there, also appointed a joint committee to evaluate reconstruction. Like, is this done? Is this actually complete? Uh, what else needs to happen? And so Congress passed a bill that extended the life of the Freedmen's Bureau. And this was a bureau that was created in March of 1865 which provided food, clothing, medical care to war refugees. So not just um, formerly enslaved war refugees, but also white Southerners who had to flee the area as well. And so it took care of their needs and it also settled free people on abandoned lands. And so when they re-upped it, they also added um, a special branch that would supervise special courts to resolve disputes involving freed people and establishing schools for black southerners as well and it passed with almost unanimous republican support even still johnson vetoed this um, he also vetoed a civil rights bill that would have overturned some of those harsher elements of the black codes that had been passed in the south like it would have officially declared african-american citizens would have given them the right to own property, to make contracts, um, given them access to courts as both parties and witnesses. Didn't give them the right to vote, but Johnson vetoed it. And this is really the last straw for Congress. They were just completely ticked off. So Congress overrode his veto. And then they proceeded to approve a slightly amended Freedmen's Bureau bill. And then he vetoed it again, and they overrode his veto again. Um, and with this is what Johnson continues to do, is veto everything that Congress is doing. And while this is going on, as we'll talk about, um, this really pushes the moderates into the, into the radical camp, right? Um, okay, so in 1866, we have the 14th Amendment. This is proposed by the Joint Committee on Reconstruction, and it does give African Americans uh, citizenship. That is the big piece here. Um, it is also designed to prevent Confederates from denying African Americans basic rights and preventing them from taking over these reconstructed state governments. So it passes both houses with the two thirds vote. It also guarantees a repayment of the national war debt. So the war debt that the North had accrued throughout the Civil War guarantees that that's going to be paid off as a federal debt, meaning taxes will be collected by all states to pay for that, but it denied the Confederate war debt. So that those Southern states are on their own paying for their rebellion. Um, it also disqualified high ranking Confederates from holding office. Um, and this was done to counteract all of those pardons and Johnson was giving out. It did not grant African American suffrage, but Congress could reduce representation of any state that did not have impartial suffrage. So if a Southern state isn't allowing African Americans to vote, then they don't get as many representatives in Congress. Um, but most importantly here, an American citizen is anyone born in the U.S. or naturalized. Um, and it pro prohibited states from abridging the rights of citizens. So Johnson, of course, is unhappy about this. He urges the South to not ratify. And so most of the South does not ratify the 14th Amendment, except for the state of Tennessee, which is Johnson's home state. And when Tennessee ratified the 14th Amendment, they were readmitted to the Union without any restrictions. And the fun part of this is that when Tennessee sent in their ratification in this telegram, they tacked on a note as well, which read, give my respects to the dead dog in the White House. Um, so even Johnson's home state like hated Andrew Johnson, which I think is really hilarious. Um, so we're gonna pause here and we'll continue with a part two, stay tuned.